Welcome to Binary Jazz. Again, here we are, a show about things with me, Chris, Jazz Sequence on the Internet, and Gary, who's Binary Gary on the Internet, and Allison, who's Allison Plus on the Internet and in Canada, and parts unknown. Wow, you are, yeah, you're roboting. Uh, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, but he's so enjoying the sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, this is a show with uh, with uh, uh, things and people, and and usually what happens is that uh, Allison will bring a topic, and Gary and I won't know about about the topic beforehand. We'll probably won't know what the topic is, and then we debate. Uh, sort of, um, uh, what we think the topic might actually refer to or mean. I really like my uh, topic. Here. But yeah, good. I brought it last week, but we didn't get to it. So yeah, but that was that. the butthole episode. So <laughs> we had other things to discuss. Yeah, <laughs> it's always yeah, the butthole. Yeah, I think we should get right into it then, so we don't miss it. Expect much. Uh, you can't expect much from the butthole. My topic for today is a blout reduplication. What? A blout? <laughs> a blout reduplication. Like the word about with an L in it randomly? Sort of. It's A B L A U T. Okay. A blout. And then space. <laughs> and then reduplication. I like space. Reduplication. Like duplicating things again. Yep. Yeah cool um well shit (laughs) re i mean i think even just the term reduplication would probably take us all episode to to say stupid things about (laughs) i mean reduplication is is redundant like if it's duplicated then why would you need to reduplicate it well i think there's a clue there chris i think that reduplication is indicative of the fact that uh like there's a duplication process and this is the reduplication. So what, what does that mean? Is it a duplication of the duplication process? Like a duplicate duplication? This, you know what this is, actually? This is, um, this is some kind of government form. You need to fill out the about reduplication form. No, no, this is just the about, about duplication form. We need the reduplication form. <laughs> and about is an acronym. Chris, you know what it stands for. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is uh, associated bodies uh, likened to uh, alpacas in Utah. Oh. Yeah. So I'm not sure why Alice needs to fill one of those out in Canada, but <laughs> yeah, th- part of the it's, part of the uh, you know what it property is property purchasing process. Maybe it's the cloning process for these alpacas. Yeah, I was gonna say. You know what it is? It's, it's when you, whenever you, uh, <laughs> whenever you have an alpaca on your property, you need to f- f- fill out the re- bl- blout du- reduplication form uh, in mm-hmm. order to uh, authorize the uh, ownership of an alpaca on your property. Hmm. Which is different from the, uh, uh, I don't know, it'd be, I guess, uh, a blucut uh, reduplication form, the ABLCUT form, which is if you like needed, if you're going to have chickens on your property. Yeah, totally different form. Yeah. A- Abelkut. <laughs> that sounds like a, uh, actually, it sounds like a name. That someone in Salt Lake would have, Salt Lake City would have. Abelkut? Yeah, it sounds like a Mormon name, doesn't it? No, no. Is this not? A, a Mormon name would be Lavabelkut. <laughs> <laughs> because, because. That tickles because, me. <laughs> because Mormon names are all La with a V in front of your your name so like there's lavan and lavar and lavanda and la i don't know really there's a lot of love somethings 
Yeah, it's That's... it's a it's a dumb thing. Lavar shocked, shocked to hear that. Actually, it would be a dumb thing. <laughs> um, we're also really good at spelling things wrong, mm-hmm. and and pronouncing right. things wrong for that matter. Have I ever have I ever said on the show? We there's a there's a city in in Utah called Hurricane. It's yes, spelled, it's spelled hurricane, but you pronounce it hurricane. Oh, That's so not a mispronunciation. That's a southern pronunciation. Yeah, <laughs> hurricanes. Hur- hurricanes uh, are coming. There, there is, and there's a better lake. even chance I'll hear that this year. There's a lake that is hard to find called Secret Lake, spelled with a C. Oh, yeah, you had some assholes. Were, like Mormon pioneers were maybe not the brightest tools in the shed. I think they were just jerks. <laughs> Something fun that I've discovered about Nanamo is that at some point the mayor let his kids choose the street names. Oh. And so there's a lot of really great street names as a result. Like Rocket Street. Is, is there a butthole street? There's well, I mean, like there's like jingle pot, there's like weird, I don't know. I can't think of any now, but like you come across a street name and you're just like, mm, that must have been one of the ones that's just like just fun to say so you're just like higgledy piggledy drive or like <laughs> <laughs> we just received girl scout cookies and um after and now lunch, you're in the process of uh, about reduplicating them um well it just reminded me after lunch one day i offered the kids some cookies and uh tells them oh what kind do we have and i'm like well we have dosi dos and we have i don't know the names um but then i started laughing about how ridiculous the sentence i put together was so we spent like a good five minutes like making up Girl Scout cookie names. Maybe that's a segment. What's your, what's your favorite, your go-to Girl Scout cookie? Tagalongs. Same. Yeah. I don't get the Thin Mint excitement. I don't oh, either. I, 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 I don't understand it, but yeah. I will eat an entire box. <laughs> no. I, they taste yeah. like paper. They taste like minty chocolate paper but I will eat the whole box. I find mint to be a very unpleasant. I think you've talked about this before. I don't like mint. I mean, I don't like, I'll, I'll eat mint if it's like, you know, if that's dessert and I'm somewhere polite company, which doesn't happen. Um, you know, I would eat mint, whatever. I but, like mint. I'm just fussy about it. So in certain forms, I'm just like, I don't know what this is. Yeah. So the ablaut reduplication uh, Thank you. There was there was a Sundance film that I saw, and I can't remember the name of it, but it was about uh, time it was travel. It was about time travel. It was a balut. <laughs> Thank you. It was you. about, it, it was was about time. Tra- what? Yes, I think it was. Yeah, <laughs> really low low budget indie uh, film about time travel. Uh, about these like incredibly, incredibly, incredibly nerdy. Uh, because it was like all about the science and these and and these uh, scientists that were doing this, stuff. and uh, and I just decided that the device that they build in uh, the movie is probably an ablaut reduplicator, and so the ablaut reduplication process is the process that you go through when it is uh, sort of duplicating your uh, your. The, the, duplicating the particles inside the box uh, for to transport to a different time space. Wait, is this a space term? It can yes. be anything you want it sure. to be, Gary. I mean, everything is a space term, Gary, right? Everything can Possibly. be a space term. I, I'm just wondering if it is a space term. Uh, I still don't if know it, what it is. I was going to say, if it was a space term, what would it be? I don't know. I, I, I got nothing. I, I'm over here watching the uh, the squirrels finish off this corn cob that we have like a little wooden fake squirrel picnic table screwed inside of a tree. It's gone. You look like you have a bit of a halo from whatever's behind you. Yeah, but your head is slightly in the wrong place. So the halo is sort of there you go. There we go. <laughs> that right there? Um, yeah. Yes. Oh, I picked a really crappy spot to sit in front of like this dead vine, huh? <laughs> uh, it's all right. Also, give it, give it like a month, then it'll be back and like strong, and I won't actually have space to sit here. This thing grows in like minutes. I, also I don't know think, what it is. 
I also think that about is how you say about in like the Midwest and uh, Northern Midwest and Canada. New Zealand. No. Oh. The Northern Mid- Midwest and, and Canada. Uh, a blue. Well, all right. I'm going to I'm going to give it an actual effort this time. No. Of just saying no. it's a space thing. It's so it has to be a science term because reduplication doesn't make sense in any other context outside of fantasy. But fantasy is often overlapping with science at odds with. Uh, so a blout reduplication is um, related to atom splitting. Uh, and uh, it is when split atoms, uh, I don't know what happens to them. What happens to split atoms? They reform into full atoms after being split. Maybe this is not atoms. Maybe this is not the atomic level. Maybe this is like the molecular level. I would say... Well, reduplication would say, when a molecule is blasted apart and then it and reduplicates then it, back to what it was. You, but from oh, pieces of other molecules that were blown apart. See, so you have I, water, you blast it into hydrogen and oxygen, and then it's like, oh, look at this. And the wow, reduplication is it comes back in water, but different atoms making up the new molecules. I see. I was gonna. I was gonna <laughs> say like, that. I was gonna say I they're see. blasted Bullshit. apart, and then the for the process of blasting apart fought, causes a a chain reaction where they blast apart again. Oh. Oh, maybe that's it. It's like a resonant thing. Uh, I like the idea. That was I'm not sure it's anywhere close to obviously reality. discovered by Pascal Ablaut, very famous scientist, Doctor Doctor Pascal Ablaut. You used to see him out in a blot on town. <laughs> That's my favorite part of this word or this phrase, a blout. <laughs> a blout. Is it is it a computer science term? That'd be even funnier. It can be anything. I made a Gary. I'm not answering yet. I know. I uh, I made a stupid uh, name for a thing yesterday. I have to look up and see what it was. Was it the uh was it the uh, hold here, please? Uh, the 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 hold here, please uh, method, uh, where apparently no. you just send stuff to die. I, and there's three <laughs> versions of it. It's not just hold here, please. It's like hold here, please. Add hold here, please. Please, I don't know. Like, what? <laughs> What a we, stupid name. Well, like, I have, have no have, idea you have to have, what it does. You have to have hold here, please. And then yes. you have to have uh, hold here, please create. And hold here, please update. And hold here, please delete. For it to be a fully functioning. Correct, uh, yeah. Yeah. So hold here, please is, just, is obviously just the read-only version of that method. I have a problem with CRUD. And that is that more common these days instead of a CRUD operation is like an, an absurd operation. So like it would only be like a rud right because the create is inherent in the update like if it doesn't exist just create it technically that's still a crud though technically that's still creating it just it, it is just but there's not nested there's not within, four endpoints for yeah, it, it just, there's only it three nested, endpoints it just nested within the well it's so there's no somewhere. do you so do you call that action a create or do you call it an update you call it an update if it doesn't exist and you don't know it doesn't exist, you still call it an update and then it gets created. So was that a creator? Or was that an update? The actor said it was an update, but the actee said it was a create. It's ambiguous. This is a dumb conversation. It I'm sorry I brought it up. <laughs> well, I brought it up. But this is the kind of stuff that I... keeps me up at night. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. On my screen, I'm in the middle and you're on both sides of me. So I feel like it's like one of those table conversations where two people are talking. And I'm like, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> So, I added here, a reserver. <laughs> so be like, I'll have the dessert menu. <laughs> have the ablaut menu. So this past Saturday was uh, Small Business Saturday in downtown Concord. Went from like 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. or something. Like a kind of arbitrary time in the middle of the day. But it was like, it was this. It was beautiful. The sky was blue. It was warm enough to just wear like a light sweater or whatever. Uh, so we went, we like, and it's outside. Like they closed the entire, like the entire, they closed two blocks of downtown, which is the entirety of downtown. Um, so you can just walk like north and south of uh, 
whatever road that is on Union. And, uh, you know, we were like, well, should we go or not? Like, it's probably, you know, we'll go early. And if it's busy, we'll leave. We don't want to be around a lot of people, obviously. Um, but it's outside. So it feels like a, you know, it might be a fun thing to do. Um, yeah, I think we like, when we showed up, I think we doubled the amount of people that were in attendance. <laughs> there was no one there for like two blocks. Like, every day. like there was like a couple over there, there was a couple over there. And then there was, you know, my group of five of us wandering around. There were two breweries that had tents set up selling beer. Um, and you went to all of them. Drink well, no, Ron just. I, I already tried beer from one, and it was fine. And uh, Ron just like, "Oh, you should, you should, uh, you should get a beer." I'm like, well, you don't have to ask me twice, right? So, <laughs> so then the kids are like, "Well, can we go in the game store?" Because they had never been in the game store, and that's really there's a bookstore and a game store that they were interested in. So, the kids finally got to go into the game store in downtown Concord, uh, and I got to walk around the Concord game store, drinking a beer. Hmm. It was great. It was a good Saturday. I don't know that we have enough small businesses downtown to justify a small business Saturday. Um, but I appreciate the effort and I appreciate it having like two lanes to walk right down the middle of safely. Yesterday was international GM's day, March 4th. Congratulations. Yes. Well, that, 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 that congratulations, uh, just doubled the amount of, uh, um, uh, acknowledgement, well, acknowledgement that I received on the International GM's Day, um, and I think the first one was only because I I have um, I added this uh, calendar bot into my Discord channel, uh, and when I learned about International GM's Day, I added uh, it as an event to the calendar bot so that it would like announce that it's coming and that it's happening. Uh, and it did. And so I think the only reason why, and it was like, it was the same like meme that I uh, had seen previously, which is that uh, Batman slapping Robin meme. Uh, mm. And Robin says, I'm not going to acknowledge or I'm not going to uh, observe uh, GM's day until there's a player's day. And Batman is saying, um, idiot, or you fool? Uh, don't you know that every day that there is a GM running your game is a player's day? Um, and uh, so, can I ask an ignorant question? Sure. GM DM. What's, what's DM, the differentiation? DM is uh, a term that is specific to Dungeons and Dragons because it is Dungeon Master. Okay. Um, and GM is a term that is used by other systems as a more generic term of Game Master. Got it. Katie, for her birthday, got a game that I have had to act as impromptu game master for. It is not a role-playing game, but it is complicated enough that she needs someone to help her mm -hmm. like navigate the rule set and figure out what she can and can't do. That's it. That's the entire story. Cool. What game is it? You left up like the meat. I don't remember what it's called, but it is, it's a, it's a logic puzzle. It's a single player logic puzzle where there's these mm. cats that have committed crimes. Oh, cat and... crimes. Is that what it's called? <laughs> yeah. There, there is a game called Cat Crimes, and we have to Google it. And that's, and that's exactly what it is: is the cats have cat cats make crime. And it's called. Cat oh my crime. god, that's it! <laughs> you can't, you can't get past me with a game without, without like. Cat crimes. Yeah, of course. That, that should um, be the show right there. Is like Gary badly, dis poorly describes a game, and Chris just guesses the name of the game. <laughs> um. So like the first level is like she has no problem comprehending, but then some of the later stuff, mm -hmm. like and I understand now. Like, I understand now how you could GM that. Yeah, yeah. So I read the I read the rule. I read the scenario. Yeah, and uh, and then after I've read the scenario, uh, generally like she asks for clarification, and I can read the scenario and clarify. Yeah, you are then, already, that is, you're already deputizing yourself as a GM. I am, I am the de facto GM in the house. I mean, we're playing something. It, it I, doesn't, it I doesn't... purchased two games this past week, or no, I kickstarted two games this week. I didn't purchase them. They're not available yet. But I kickstarted a game this week. What game? Oh, I maybe, maybe kickstarted two. Uh, the game that I, that I kickstarted uh, recently or most recent, I mean, there's a couple. Uh, that I've done. But the one that I'm thinking of uh, most recently is called Coyote and Crow, which is mm. a role-playing game whose uh, writing team is entirely um, native and first people. Um, 
and or first nation and um the the setting is um a uncolonialized north america um okay. so and it's in sort of near future uh and it's a science fantasy game so the idea is that the north america was never colonialized uh these tribes were able to um to build up to larger like and become like technological nations but there is a disaster that happened that caused um part of the nation to sort of freeze over uh and they're sort of in a rebuilding phase after the ice is starting to melt and they've got science and they've got uh technology and they've got magic and uh, it's really neat and part of the reason why i i wanted to um back it was because of the um the the native uh team but all and to support you know uh, indigenous creators but um also the setting sounds pretty freaking awesome yeah it does I, I love that concept of the interception intersection of science technology native what, culture uh, what game fantastic did you, uh, what game did you back uh so keymaster released a new one on kickstarter called caper yep. and so we're big yep. keymaster fans here yep I uh that. i didn't read much about it i just said it's keymaster I'll give it a shot. There uh, is. It was uh, back like within hours. So yeah, yeah. I am hopeful. <laughs> uh, there's another uh, game that I, uh, another RPG thing, uh, is a called Tournament of Pigs that is um, uh, a couple days from from the end, and they uh, go support it. Although they're going to be done with the campaign by the time by the time this airs, so I guess never mind. Um, that is a zero level. Uh, D D adventure wherein you play like yeah zero level characters like normal commoners in a bloody uh sort of uh, arena style uh tournament uh and basically like you create um you create multiple characters uh, of zero level characters and based on the stats that you roll um determines their occupation and then basically whoever survives the tournament is who you get to play with because <laughs> they're all gonna die um and uh this isn't in the last week but i also backed tiny epic dungeons recently we're big uh gamelin tiny epic uh fans too and tiny epic dungeons is pretty pretty cool looking a blout reduplication i feel like i feel like um i've, I've always been that is a card in magic the gathering a blout reduplication Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's a blue card. Like I had that card. Yeah. Yeah, it's a blue card. It costs. Are you ready uh, for the reveal, or should we wait? It costs uh, two blue mana, Apparently and not. and one colorless, and a blout reduplication. The text says, um, uh, at the beginning of your opponent's next turn, uh, copy a card in copy any permanent in play and play it immediately uh as your own then uh send this card that's a sick it. card and then this card goes into your graveyard that's a sick card <laughs> yeah about a blot reduplication yeah it, it's not an it, it, you, you play it as uh as uh it's it's sort of an it's like it can be played as an instant but it doesn't actually take effect until uh someone else's turn I have been thinking I should get like two starter decks and teach the kids Magic the Gathering. How are they? Uh, eight and ten. Yeah. Yep. I mean, the three-year-old probably wouldn't catch it yet. <laughs> we started. I mean, we started with things earlier, I, I, than that, but eight and ten is definitely old enough to to get the basics and be able to play. You want it, to? It's you kind of have to curate the decks that uh, you get because you want to get stuff that's a lot simpler. Um, but most of the pre-made decks that you can get, especially in, in like if you're not doing something more complicated, like a like a five-color deck or a or like a you know really nasty blue deck or something um, with lots of like uh, control stuff. Um, like if you're just doing like a standard green or red deck, um, then then it's pretty straightforward for for new players. I need to do some research and figure out what decks I'm going to buy. What if I? Yeah, yeah, I. Uh... I, I haven't played it in years. I would also recommend for starting players sticking with the core set and uh, decks that are around the core set, like as opposed to going into like whatever, whatever um, theme or whatever they call their their releases. 
um, uh, because the core rules are the core the core decks and the core cards are a lot more basic. Um, so they don't get into the crazy rules that are unique to a specific series. Yeah, that makes sense. I uh, I think the last CCG I was really into was Star Wars, and uh, that died a terrible death. But it's great though. Uh, there is uh, there is an old deck that we found at some point that I have, uh, and it's probably I don't know worth too much money now. But it's it's a it's from Mercadian Masks, which makes it pretty old. But it's a soldier deck. And the whole concept of the deck, it's a white, it's a white deck. And the whole concept of the deck is you have these soldiers and uh, each one, you, you bring it into play and then they can call in another soldier of lesser value. So essentially mm-hmm. like, you get one out and then you can just use that one to call all of your other soldiers in. And then you eventually just have an army of tiny little, tiny little men um, and women uh, to, uh, to overpower your, your opponent. It's, a blout reduplication. A blout on the edge of my seat. Edge of your seat. You've you've heard it. You've experienced it. You. No. Yeah, you have. It's, it's a deja lingu- vu. <laughs> it's a linguistic term when you duplicate a word in speech but change the vowel. So mishmash, chit chat, hip hop, tic tac toe, um, any of those things. Um, and it always has to be a certain vowel order. So if it's three words, then it has to be I, A, O. And if it's two words, it has to be, the first is almost always an I. And the second is either an A or an O. But it's like, we don't say, you know, and that's why it sounds weird if we, if someone messes up the order, we're like, that's not how you say it. It's like jingle, vowel. jangle versus jingle, jingle. Wow. Yeah. So that's a black. Wow. Gamble. There's, there's a word for that. It's linguistic, but it's not just in English. It's in a bunch of different languages. Magmog. Bing bong. <laughs> <laughs> now just, you're trying to, are you trying to think of one that doesn't? I'm just, try, I'm just trying to make up words and see if they sound right. <laughs> Cam Kong. <laughs> uh, like dilly dally. You're not going to say dally dilly. Like, yeah. Even yeah. though they're nonsense words. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Yeah. That is uh, obviously not something that we uh, considered. No. No, not at all. Um, let's see. I did. I think I pinned. I did. All right. We still have this series of uh, questions that Gary posted a while ago that we could probably go back to. Uh, we did what did you want to be when you grew up uh, is there one that you would like to ask I suppose Gary I don't know nope not at all. <laughs> yeah I don't have any idea what these questions are it's been uh, weeks now yeah uh, well I pinned it so uh, I have it right in front of me um, we is that did a Pinterest thing one. we did the name one we did the last song you listened to except that got cut off at the end of the show um <laughs> Uh, we did weirdest food. Um, I'm, I'm torn between two, uh, bing bong. Uh, what is something most people don't know about you? (laughs) I'm on a podcast. (laughs) That's fair. That's fair. I feel like that's actually, that's probably mine as well. I don't know. I think there's a lot of things that people don't know about me. Yeah. Yeah. I think it depends on the context, right? Like I think you guys I think you two know a fair bit about me and like weird antidotes. Um did you know I'm left-handed? I did not. I think, okay, there you go. <laughs> I think I think yeah. I did know. Yeah. But I think that that was because I've met you in person. <clears throat> Probably. Yeah. It was an awkward handshake. And all the yeah, all the all the essay writing I was doing. <laughs> no, I think I, I think it was just I don't know. Uh, it, it that's an observable thing often, like just like anecdotally in between things, you know, um, not not even specifically writing, but but there was probably that as well. Um, something that people I, there's a lot of things. 
I mean, yeah, it depends on the context. Um, but um, there's a lot of things that 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 I kind of keep close to the chest. Uh, mm -hmm. That most people They're don't. All very know. secretive people, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like I am. I feel like I'm an open book. I just feel like the pages are there's like many blank pages. So to find a page with something written on it takes a while. Um, <laughs> I let me see. I mean, um, it's not a secret that I was formerly a goth. <laughs> I think that's um, pretty. That's out there for the world yeah. to know. Um. I mean, something that most people don't know about me is that I was poly for a few years. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's, that's the appropriate response. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I feel was, about it too. <laughs> was that when I was supposed to go congratulations again? No, I think. no, it doesn't need <laughs> congratulations. Um, yeah. It's hard because depending on the audience, it's like, well, is someone who's interviewing you? For I'm not a gonna, job? yeah, I'm not gonna talk about that too. To yeah, whatever. exactly. Versus like, oh, <laughs> you're friends, or you're like, that's funny. I, mean, um, I, don't, I don't even talk about that with. Them. Yeah, I don't even talk about that with my poly friends because I don't want them to get an impression that I still am. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I do like like have a understanding of the other side and I also have opinions about what that is like. Mm -hmm. That could be a whole podcast in itself. Yeah. Yeah. I would be. say here's a here's one. Here's a good one. Uh hailing back to card games. Card games. I was actually a Star Wars uh CCG ranked card player at one point. Huh. It wasn't a very high ranking, but I was ranked. Uh <laughs> I was once a sports bro. No. Yeah. Not for, okay. I mean, not like in, not, not, I don't believe, I don't believe that. <laughs> not past, oh. not, not past elementary school. I got a new one. How about a new one? That's just happened in our family. Sure. Uh, we're NASCAR fans now. Oh, Jesus. What's happening? I know. They moved to North Carolina and everything All goes. All of a sudden, this, yeah, the secret episode is when the, the real, the real. <laughs> Yeah, now just, we finally three seasons we, and have gotten to the meat. It's like it's the the track here in town is like the thing in town. So we went there for Christmas lights, and I got to go drive the mini. That's how you drove the minivan around the NASCAR track. Yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah. Okay, cool. That was awesome. Uh, no, it wasn't really my thing, but Tyler was like, "Oh, can we watch a race?" So we watched. We've been watching races on Sunday. It's like mm -hmm. uh, he's like, "Can we turn on the race?" Yeah, and I don't know. It's kind of fun. Um, yes, I was a, I was a sports bro up until eighth grade. I didn't do it in I didn't do it in high school, but I played baseball and I played basketball and I played flag football for a year until uh, a fellow teammate broke my arm. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> which, I played baseball as a which kid, which made me think that maybe I shouldn't play football. <laughs> they had the majors and minors. So everybody got into the minors, but to go to the majors, which happened around like the age of, I think, 11, you had to try out for the majors. Mm. And uh, that that included like both hitting and fielding. And the fielding, like at that age, no one can field. No one can catch the ball. I mean, there was, there was like, you know, some all-star kids, but generally like if they threw the ball towards you, like if you got your glove in contact with it, it was probably sufficient enough, you know? Uh, you have to actually catch it. You just had to touch it. So fielding everybody sucked. Uh, and then uh, hitting, I the first pitch to me uh, hit me in the shoulder, <laughs> and I cried. And there was my chance of making the majors. Uh, so I never played baseball. I mean, I, I that was it. I was done with baseball. That dumb. seems that seems like probably that was fairly young. <laughs> I played baseball later than that. Uh, I played. I mean, baseball. what if I had been hit by that pitch? Would I be a baseball fan? That probably not. I played baseball uh, when I, I played baseball. baseball stadium, although. Um, the coaches pitched uh, for much of the time that I played baseball. And I think the year that uh, kids pitched, I think I played at least one year uh, where kids, yeah. I, I played, I played for my school and I also played like in like rec leagues. Yeah. Uh, this was, this was a, an adult pitching that hit me with the ball. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think when, I think there was a year when I, when I played when kids pitched um, and 
Like that was a big, that's a big, that's a big leap between your coach pitching, like trying to get you to hit the ball and like somebody like literally firing fastballs at you. Like that's, there's a big difference between those two things. There's no ramp up there. Uh, But I play basketball. I I just got a slack alert that made me chuckle. The name of the next episode popped up. It said episode butthole. (laughs) (laughs) Like what? Slack. (laughs) <laughs> Congratulations! Today is the the day that episode butthole goes live. Yeah. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.